always having a, a great closeout weekend uh, to 2023, preparing to go into uh, 2024 on the right note. For all the people who have stopped by and partook of everything that I've offered on the Black Voice from the Odyssey Project, all the work in the Black community, all the information, all the books, all everything, I want to say thank you, uh, but I want to close this year out with a challenge. Um, before I do, you know uh, the routine by now. If you like, uh, what you see in here on this channel, including this video, click the like button. If you uh, really like it, share it with someone else so they can be blessed as well. Subscribe. Uh, if you believe in the work we're doing in the black community and have been doing for over 30 years, show some love and support and get behind us financially. What has to be done, what is being done, and what needs to be done doesn't come through osmosis, wishful thinking, or hopefulness. It comes through the, uh, the accumulation of resources that are amply applied properly uh, in the way that's necessary to make things change. It's that simple. It's time to stop talking. It's time to stop complaining. It's time to stop whining. It's time to take action. If you follow me for any stretch of time, you know who I am, what I've done, what I continue to do. Uh, what, how much of myself I've given to this work over the several decades and I will continue as long as I have breath in my body to do so. But here's the thing. That's a little thing that always happens at the end of the year. People say, they talk about things that they don't want to take into uh, the new year. So they talk about things to leave in whatever year it is. So, you know, there's a bunch of stuff and most of it's funny going around things we're going to leave in 2023. Well, here's some things that I want to talk to the black community about leaving in 2023. It's not so much comedic. Uh, it is more uh, serious and it is so necessary. One of the first things we need to leave in um, 2023 is the use of the term toxic masculinity to explain uh, horrible, terrifying, terrifying uh, destructive, and all types of negative behavior by black men. Uh, it is antithetical to the true meaning of masculinity. Masculinity by, by its very nature cannot be toxic. Masculinity by its very nature is protective, it's provisional, it's um, the positive exp uh, expression of true manhood. So it can't be toxic. When you start talking about toxic behavior, you start talking about moving away from masculinity. We need to be careful of what we use because masculinity, especially in black men, is under assault. And so one way to attack it is to apl apply negative behavior to black manhood in general. And that term toxic masculinity needs to stay behind. The next thing that we need to leave in 2023 is this gender war between black men and black women look we need each other i don't care what they tell you i don't care what statistics say i don't care what social media is pumping we need each other without masculine energy and feminine energy merging uh and creating synergy that allows us to take things to a level that neither of us can do on our own we will never truly achieve liberation and empowerment we were meant to stand together we were meant to work together and what that means is we've got to leave the antagonistic and antithetical behavior behind as well what, uh, what does that mean the things that uh black men, the things that make black women not trust us. We need to be aware of what we're doing. We need to stop trying to determine whether a woman deserves our respect and our protection and start simply being men who respect and protect. Now, if a woman proves to you she's not deserving of the value that you're presenting in your behavior, remove yourself from the situation, but don't ever mishandle, mistreat, a mistake because it's being used against us. Ladies, we're more than just the bag. We're more than just what we can pay when uh, when the bills arrive. Oh, we're, we're supposed to be providers, but we're so much more than providers. We are far more than just what we have in our bank accounts. And this is the thing that I can't tell you and express enough is that we are going to have to 
do a better job of loving on one another, protecting one another, being kind to one another, and all of the above. So we need to leave that in 2023. What else do we need to leave in 2023? We need to leave the complaining and whining about what our youth are doing in the way of entitlement and crazy behavior. And we need to address the fact that we're not properly socializing them, that we're not properly preparing them, that we are not creating young uh, boys and girls that will grow up and be uh, exceptional and high performing young women and young men. And that's on us. That's not on them. You can't leave them to their own wiles and expect them to develop into who they're supposed to be. That's not how things work. So then what are we to do? We are to sit up and to look. How can we prepare young boys? We need a rite of passage. I created that. The Black Man Lead Rite of Passage has been around for uh, about 10 plus years now. And what is it? It's the proper socialization of young black males in demand. It's a rite of passage. Every other group has a rite of passage except us. There needs to be... Here's another thing we need to leave in 2023. 2023 the, ambigu uh, the ambiguity of the term manhood. We need to define what manhood is so that everybody knows it. There needs to be a universal definition of manhood. Being a man is more than the bag. Being a man is more than how many bodies you can bag. Being a man is more than uh, uh, your body count and, and, and all this other stuff that we erroneously adhere to. Being a man is being the the initial source the foundation the parameter the protector the provider the priest all of these different things and we need to define that we need to have a universal understanding of what manhood is so that then we can uh effectively train up young boys to be men so that they walk in the purity of manhood we need to define what we uh, desire for our women to be not as servants to black men but as executors of their own power their own destiny but with an understanding of what they can do when they connect with a soulmate when they connect with someone who will cover them when they connect with someone who will pour into them speak into them love them to life those are the things we should be preparing our children for and we, 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 we need to redefine what beauty is because they're getting bombarded with images of beauty that they can't relate to and they are trying to find themselves they, they should know who they are because we should be properly preparing them properly socializing them properly developing them it is our responsibility to do that so that's just some of the things we we've, we've got to leave 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 consumerism and 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 and, and uh non-productive spending in 2023 leave financial illiteracy in 2023 make 2024 the the year that you discover and learn and understand how economies are built how money works the difference between currency and money how you protect your wealth how you uh, how you develop and build wealth all the mechanisms that are available to you no matter where you are in your current financial journey all of these things are things that we need to develop there's so much more but what i want to do is surmise it in this way we've got to commit to be better be, commit to being better individuals in 2024 that means every day we got to wake up and want to be better want to know more want to do more want to rise and be more uh we've got to be aware of our weaknesses aware of our fallibilities but also not use them as excuses to stay where we're at it's about a constant push to be better 
And that's my challenge. My challenge is that we be better. My challenge is that we stop whining, stop complaining, stop pointing fingers, stop. Everybody is a victim. Victims don't ever win. Victims never have power. I ain't saying somebody hasn't done something to you. I'm pretty sure they have. I'm not saying that you haven't gone through some things. I'm not saying you weren't born into a screwed up situation. I'm not saying that certain people that should have protected you mishandled you. I'm not saying that didn't happen. What I'm saying is hanging your hat on that focusing on that living in that moment consistently in a cycle is never going to change it's never going to bring you power it's never going to extract you from your pain it's never going to elevate you all it's going to do is keep you reliving the same thing over and over your entire life it's time to walk out of it it's time to walk out of it one step at a time i promise you i'm going to keep things coming i'm going to keep information coming i'm going to keep uh, plans coming. I'm going to continue to do research. I'm going to continue to do program development. I'm going to can you continue to do everything I can. But you guys have got to make up in your mind that this is more than just catching a podcast here, watching this, talking about it with your friends, and then going on and playing the same game in the same system. And the system is constantly using you to destroy you. And you are willfully participating in it because you don't understand the game. I've said this for years, and you've heard me say this if you follow me, that we continue to be last on the socioeconomic low, uh, uh, arena. We, keep, we, we continue to be oppressed, mishandled, misled, mistreated because we refuse to gain an understanding of how things work. And until we gain an understanding of how things work, we will continue to be mishandled, misled, and bum-rushed and and it, it, it's a shame because we're such an exceptional people. We're such an extraordinary people. I was doing some research uh, on homicides, and you know, and this is an intersectional, uh, cross-cultural study. So I'm looking at murders, homicides, and kidnappings in, in every race and ethnic group. And I came across a journal entry. It was the final journal entry of a young uh, Chinese girl uh, who had came as a foreign exchange student or came here uh, to do her graduate work at University of Illinois. And the last thing this person wrote, uh, coming from the culture she came from to this culture and seeing all the possibilities, the last thing that she wrote was, Life is too short to be ordinary. And I'm like, absolutely, absolutely on point. I've said it in many ways, many times, but to see that being the last entry, no, she died because somebody with a sick mind um, decided to kidnap her, rape her, murder her, and kill her. Um, and this phenomenon is something that I'm studying now because I need to lay it in juxtaposition to the things that I see within the black community that are distinctly different, but immensely devastating nonetheless. But anyway, life is too short to be ordinary. And the thing is, every last person that's going to watch this video has the capacity to be exceptional, phenomenal, extraordinary but it doesn't come simply because it's there. It has to be activated, it has to be accessed, it has to be actualized. Um, and that is a responsibility that's left to each individual. But when we as individuals become exceptional, we as a collective become phenomenal. And that's something that I want us to work on. I want us to leave this division this idea that only one person can win, this competitiveness, this cattiness, all of this stuff that keeps us in constant conflict with one another. I want to see that left in 2023 as well. On that note, look, I could talk all day about the stuff that I see that I don't want to see in it, and, and I understand what the realities are, and uh, that is that. So I'm going to get off of here. I'm going to move away from um, things for the remainder of the day and kind of just reflect. But again, if you believe in what we're doing, show some love, show some 
support, share, like, donate. On that note, I'm out of here. You have a great day.